Welcome back, my spring chickens. My name is Clint Hoagland, and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In our last video, I discussed a quick tip to allow for stereo processing using Chuck Ugens. In the video before that, I had said that coming up was a video regarding subclasses and inheritance, so let's talk about those things now. In video 20, we talked about classes, which are a way to make reusable blueprints for objects that you want to make in your code. As we've said before, Chuck is a strongly typed language, which means that all objects have types, and you can use classes to define those types. Another common feature of strongly typed languages is called inheritance, and Chuck is no different. Chuck uses what's called the extends keyword to create subclasses. Let's see how that works. Here I have created a simple signal chain with a triangle oscillator connected to the DAC. I'll turn down the gain a little, and now let's make a loop with an arpeggio in the way that we have before. Have I used the term arpeggio before? It just occurred to me that not everyone would know what that means. An arpeggio is just a music word for playing the notes of a chord one by one. Anyways, back to Chuck. I'll create an offset. I'll define the notes of my chord. I'll make a loop that iterates through the notes of my chord. Then inside that loop, I'll add the note and the offset together, wrap that in the standard MIDI to frequency function, and chuck all of that into the oscillator's frequency property. This is nothing new, we've seen all this before. However, it is a lot of words on the screen just to change the note an oscillator is playing. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just chuck a note to an oscillator and the oscillator would just know what to do with it? Well, using inheritance, you can make a triangle oscillator that does exactly that. Let's create a new public class and we'll call it music try to try to communicate that this is a triangle oscillator that is for music. Now let's add the word extends after the class name and then we'll put in the type name try ask. When we use the extends keyword, we are telling Chuck that this new class is what's called a subclass of a parent class. The parent class in this case is try ask. Music try is a subclass of a try ask. Subclasses by default behave exactly like their parent class. This means I can replace my try ask in my signal chain with a music try and it just works. So in so doing, we can have something named something else that acts just like a try ask. Interesting, but not yet very useful. However, the keyword extends is not a coincidence. The purpose of a subclass is that we can make a class that has all the capabilities of its parent class and also extends those capabilities. Inside the music try class, let's make a function called note. Note takes a note number. Inside the note function, let's pull in our line where we add together an offset and the note and then convert them to a frequency using standard MIDI to frequency. In this case, we'll use the note number that comes in by the function's parameter. Now, offset is not defined in the scope of this class, so let's make a member variable called offset inside music try and assign 48 to that. Then we can use it in our note method. The last thing we need is something to assign it to. Back when we were setting all this up during the script, we chucked the frequency to the try ask ugen. Now that we're inside a music try and we're defining it as a class, what object do we chuck stuff into? The answer is the this keyword. When you are defining a class, you can use the this keyword to refer to the objects that will be instances of that class. So we chuck that frequency we built up into this dot freak, and that completes this function. So now we can go into our chuck program that uses music try, and instead of building up the frequency there, we can just chuck it a note number, and that just works. Observe that if we switch our oscillator back to the original try ask you gen and we run our script, it doesn't run. This is because although a music try is a kind of try ask, a try ask isn't a kind of music try. Another way to say that is that music try inherits from try ask and not the other way around. And classes can inherit from classes that inherit from other classes, which is what we call a class hierarchy or inheritance tree. In Chuck, all ugens inherit from the ugen class, which provides the gain method, the channels method, the op method, and the last method to all of its subclasses. The next layer down in this particular branch of the inheritance tree is the try ask ugen. The try ask as the freak method, as well as the sync method. It also has its way of generating sound under the hood. Finally, we created a music try that adds the note method. It gets its freak method because it's a try ask, and it gets its gain method because a try ask is a ugen. Let's add one more feature to our music try. In video 19, we talked about adding vibrato using oscillator sync. Let's use that here. Let's add a sine ask, call it vibrato, and chuck it straight into this. Then we set this.sync to two so that it modulates the frequency of the music try. Next, let's set some default parameters for that vibrato LFO. Six for frequency and five for gain sound all right. Let's play it back.
Note that we can access the inner members of that subclass like anything else. For the first part of this loop, let's use the .op property to turn it off. And in the second part, let's turn it back on and use a multiple of i to change the vibrato amount. It isn't just oscillators that can be subclassed in this way. I mentioned in the classes tutorial that a good candidate for making a class would be something that incorporated the break chopping techniques from video 18. This is very straightforward to do by simply adding the functions from that tutorial to a class that extends the sound buffer to class. Now, at least in my case, the next thing I wanted to do was add some signal processors in there. Like, let's add a reverb or a delay or whatever to our music try. It turns out that that's very hard to do because you can't really get any code between the UGen sound generator and its output. There's another special class called a chub graph that's meant to make it possible to make a class that combines multiple UGens together. We're going to talk about that next. In this tutorial, we talked about how to use inheritance to extend a class by creating a subclass. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about chub graphs, which allow you to combine UGens together.